I also can see that. Books are falling on me. Hey everyone, so I have a video. And if you'll notice, the quality should be a bit better because I'm using my new camera. I got a Canon PowerShot SX40HS. I think is all the letters and numbers. I can't ever keep track. But I will have a review of it as soon as I can work with it a little bit more. But for now, I have a giant, giant book haul for you. So if you don't like giant book hauls, this is not the video for you. Uh, I went to a library, well, two library book sales, and I have bags down here to show you. One of them doesn't even fit, so we'll see how this all goes. Uh, let's see. First, I found Jurassic Park by Michael Craigton. This is actually a first edition, and this was 50 cents at the book sale. I'm very excited to read this one. I also found The Gargoyle by Andrew Davidson. And this, again, looked really good. Only 50 cents. I've heard good reviews. I've heard bad reviews. So we'll see how it goes. I also found The Other Side of the Island by Allegra Goodman. I still need to get the stickies off of it. That Oh, I didn't even notice they teared. Oh, well. So, some of them had stickers on them. Got most of it off, but I have Gooby Gone. I'll get rid of it. But anyway, this is a dystopian, and it actually looks pretty good. I found Posh by Lucy Jackson. It's about a prep school kind of situation. I also found, oh, if you care, those last two were 50 cents each as well. This one was a dollar. And this is The Eternal Ones by Kirsten Miller. I want to make sure I said Kirsten, not Kristen. Perfect Chemistry by Simone Elkles. I believe I pronounced that right. And this was 50 cents as well. Wake by Lisa McMahon, and this was, again, 50 cents, I believe. I took the stickers off, because stickers on books annoy the heck out of me. I found In a Sunburned Country by Bill Bryson. I have a couple other books of his, and this one was only 50 cents, and this is a really nice hardcover, so I was like, yep, definitely got to pick that one up. I also got The House of the Scorpion by Nancy Farmer. This was 50 cents as well. It's one of those um, quite large print it's not large, large print, but larger print. And the dust jacket is built into the hardcover type of thing. I found The Turn of the Screw and Other Stories by Henry James. And this was a dollar as well. And it has just, uh, let's see, the figure in the carpet, the real thing, the beast in the jungle, Maud Evelyn, the tree of knowledge, things like that. But I've been wanting to read The Turn of the Screw, so I was like, may as well get it with the most stories that they had, because they had a few different editions. I also got Sweet Scarlet by Maureen Johnson. This is about a girl in during the summer who has to work at her parents' hotel, I believe. And that was a dollar, I believe. <laughs> Midnight Never... Sorry. The poor grammar spelling thing annoyed me for a second. Because I was like, it threw me off. Midnight Never Come by Marie Brennan. And this is about an alternate kind of reality where uh, there's a fairy kingdom that is underneath the uh, Queen Elizabeth's reign. And so, I thought it sounded interesting. I like the Tudors. I also found this one is kind of funny. How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnacy. Kern I'm going to go with Carnacy. It's like that. Sorry, you're in shadow. This again, 50 cents. I figured you may as well pick it up. It's kind of funny. Uh, it says, like, never say that a person's opinion is wrong. But if a person's opinion is wrong, shouldn't you clarify that for them? You know, of course tell them why it's wrong, because otherwise you just sound like a jerk. But people might not know they're wrong. Achy. I also found, if I did it, Confessions of the Killer. Though, you will notice that there is no author name on there. This is just an approved copy by from the Ron Goldman family. Uh, they, but they don't give him any, O.J. Simpson, any credit, so, yeah. Figure, may as well read it. There was a bunch of controversy, but I was too young at the time to read that kind of thing when it first came out. Uh, Betrayal by Lily St. Crow. This is the sequel to Strange Angels. So, figure. Oh, okay. By the way, if you don't like cursing, don't read these books, because I was just slipping through and I noticed the F-words, so y'all. 
I don't have an issue with it, but, you know, some people might. I also found On the Bright Side, I'm Now the Girlfriend of a Sex God by Louise Renison. And this is the sequel in the for, in the Confessions of Georgia Nicholson. I already have the first one. Whatever that one is called. I can't remember. It's out there. But I don't have the same edition. They had some covers with actual models, and they had the, these artsy ones. But this was only 50 cents for the hardcover, so I figured I may as well pick it up in case I like the other one. So yeah. And then I got two books in the Gifted series. I got Out of Sight, Out of Mind, and Better Late Than Never. See, see the picture? Sorry, it's very reflective. By Marilyn Kay. I also found Deception by Lee Nichols. This is another uh, evil boarding school kind of book. So. Running out of places to put books. I also found Momzilla's by Jill Kargman. I believe that's how it is pronounced. Co-author of The Right Address and Wolves in Chic Clothing. But I figured that might be interesting. It's definitely a chiclet kind of thing. I also found Adventures of a Celebrity Assistant. Chore Whore by Heather H. Howard. I like the picture on it. And this was a dollar, I believe. So I should have left the stickers on, but I wasn't even thinking about it. Anywho, I've actually wanted to read this for a while, so I was very happy to find it there. It was odd, for a library sale, there was not a single library book for sale, like they usually have at library sales. They're all just donated books, and it was huge. It was like the entire size of a normal basement, and it was like a mini bookstore down there, but like... The most expensive thing there was like three dollars. Every th it was three dollars and under. Most books were thirty-five cents. It was really awesome. I also found Disney War by James B. Stewart. I actually started reading this book um, from the library, but it, I knew it was just going to take forever for me to get through it. It's quite a lengthy book, so I returned it because there was a wait list on it, and now I have again, and I can read it at my leisure. Um, originally when I heard about this book, it's called Speak by Lori Hulse Anderson. I wasn't going to get it for personal reasons, uh, but it was there, and I figure I can try and get through it. Uh, just a little bit difficult. Same thing for this by, uh, it's by Daisy Whitney. Yeah. Some of them are still sticky. I have to use the Gooby Gone stuff on them. Uh, The Travel Detective by Peter Greenberg. How to get the best service and the best deals from airlines, hotels, cruise ships, and car rental agencies. And this just looks interesting. I have another one of his books, so, you know, I like that one. May as well get this one. I like traveling. So. I also found Citizen Girl by Emma McLaughlin and Nicola Krause. And they're the ones who wrote uh, The Nanny Diaries and The Nanny Returns. I believe that's what they're called. <laughs> and so I think they're British, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I'm wrong. They're from New York City. But it's just, I don't know, the, I guess the first one reminded me of a book that would be written in New, in England, London, whatever. My battery's running low. Oh no! I also found Diana, Finally the Complete Story by Sarah Bradford. This is the inside pictures. And Underboss, Sammy the Bull Gravano's Story of Life in the Mafia by Peter Moss, author of The Valachi Papers. Give that a go. I like to read about the Mafia and such. All right, at the other book sale, it was still a bag for $2. So with my books and the family's books, um, everything came to a little under 19 cents per book. So I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> I found Stormbreaker by Anthony Horowitz. It's in the Alex Ryder series. It is a middle grade book, just so you know. I also found Leviathan by Scott Westerfeld. And I didn't really like this when I got it from the library. I, I kind of wasn't that into it, but for so cheap, I figure I'll give it another go when I have more time to just sit down and read it at my pace. Oh, okay. Do not mock me for this book. I got Left Behind by Tim LaHaye Le and Jerry B. Jenkins. This actually used to have the gold on it, but I had to use this um, Gooby on stuff. Oh, and there's still a bit there. I don't know how that happened. And I guess it ate it away a bit. Anywho, uh, this is a Catholic Christian book. I don't read that kind of thing. Uh, I think it's kind of gimmicky, just in my opinion. 
Nobody else has to agree. I understand. Uh, but I like Apocalypse books, and I figured this will give it another viewpoint for me. What people would think maybe their reasoning for an apocalypse would happen. I also got Jonathan Franzen, The Corrections. Oh, the Corrections by Jonathan Franzen. That's how I should word that. And this is so annoying. Look, Oprah's Book Club. Oh, come off. How I would never allow any of my books. If I ever get a book published and they say, do you want to be at Oprah's Book Club? No, I don't. I really don't. I also got Are We There Yet? by David Levithan. And this is actually funny. This is from a completely different... I went to a different book system. This is Puyallup. And that's a completely different book... Completely different library system. I don't know how you would word that. Uh, and there is no uh, discarded from sticker or stamp or anything in here. But they were selling it, so I bought it. That's weird. I also got, not like you could see that there, really, but it's Embrace the Grim Reaper. You put the sticker, like, right all up against that. And this is also from a different um, branch. This is from a different state, in fact. But it, it does say it was purchased from them, so fair game. And this is by Judy Clements. This is a woman who actually talks with death. She knows death. Say, how? Or note, that's fine. Playland by John Gregory Dunn. This is a book about Hollywood in the 40s and 50s. I believe. I sort of skimmed the... Skimmed the... Skimmed the... Skimmed... The synopsis. That's the word. I also got The Evolution of Calpurnia Tate by Jacqueline Ken Kelly. Jacqueline Kelly. I love the cover of this. And again, this is not one you can remove. Not that I would really like to remove them, but it kind of annoys me because what if you did want to? This is actually the bane of my existence. I had to use so much of that gooby gong kind of stuff to get the sticky stickers off from the library, and I think there's still some there. It's going to drive me crazy forever. But anyway. I also got Princess of the Midnight Ball by Jessica Day George. And the stickers ripped off a bit of the cover, annoyingly. But if I really like it, I can just buy a new edition. Uh, this will just give me a chance to read it and then see if I like it. And then I can pass on that copy if I do and buy myself another one. I also got The Two Lives of Miss Charlotte Merriweather. This is an advanced corrected manuscript. How sad is that that I did not notice that until just now? I didn't, honestly. That's weird. Uh, this is by Alexandra Potter, author of Me and Mr. Darcy. Shouldn't that be Mr. Darcy and I? Anyway, this author is from England. This is the first U.S. copy thing. So, ciao! Now, I also found the I'm very excited about George Orwell's 1984, and this is the edition that I wanted because I just think the cover's kind of funky, so happy to find that copy. I also got The Debutante Divorcee by Plum Skies. I really liked the Bergdorf Blondes, so I figured I'd give this one a go. And, I mean, for 19 cents, it's not the best copy, but, you know, whatever. If I really like it, I'm always finding the hardcover everywhere I go. I also got The Replacement. It has no cover on it. It's by Brenna Yovanoff. But the funny thing is, inside, they did include the flap from the dust jacket. I don't, I don't know why, but again, 19 cents, I can read it at my own leisure. If I like it, I can find a better copy. <laughs> Last two. Nim Chimpinski, The Chimp Who Would Be Human by Elizabeth Hess. This sounds like such a sweet book and sort of sad, so we'll see how this goes. And last but certainly not least, I got the Cyclopedia of Practical Quotations Revised Edition. And this was actually... Gotta be careful. I don't know if you can see that. It's 1896. So this is an antique book. Um, I think this is actually the oldest book I have, but it's in really great condition considering it's over 100 years old. I mean, like, the pages are still really good. I don't want to too rough with it so this is definitely going on my antique shelf I mean look at that isn't that pretty you notice how it says the cyclopedia not encyclopedia 
I, I thought that the, oh, here, I'll show you the spine. I thought that the uh, quotations in here were a bit odd, like, Lachiel, Lachiel, beware of the day, for dark and despairing, my sight I may seal, but man cannot cover what God would reveal, tis the sunset of life gives me mystical lore, and coming events cast their shadows before. Campbell, Lachiel's Warning. And why does pouring oil on the sea make it clear and calm? Is it for that the winds slipping the smooth oil have no force, nor cause any waves? Plutarch, Plutarch. Morals, natural questions. So yeah, things like that in here. For 19 cents, I was like, yes, I want to get this. It's beautiful.